All right, many thanks for hanging out with us right here on Why in the Morning. Welcome back. My name is Brian Sakwa, and uh, we're going to delve right away straight up into Matters Health. And today we're going to talk about Matters uh, First Aid and Emergency Services. And joining me live with us in studio is Michael Ambrosi Luchombo, who's an emergency medical technician. And uh, great to have you, sir. Great to have you. It's an honor to be here. All right. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. <laughs> Now, um, at your company, uh, of course, uh, you are, uh, you are uh, let's say you're an emergency service provider. Uh, there's a lot that usually happens behind the scenes before you even get to that scene. For example, if you're just preparing to go to uh, a location, you've received a call or a message that, you know, somebody's in danger, they need medical help. What are some of the things that you guys do? to actually get yourself there? Because most of the time we just see ambulances on the road with a yes. very loud siren, yes. and you're like, good Lord, this, the, there must be something crazy happening right there. Yes. Right. Yeah, it's honor to be, to be here. I'll answer that question straight away. Um, when a call, a distress, a distress call comes in into a dispatch center, first of all, the dispatch, who is also a, a medic, takes in uh, information from the caller. Yeah. Number one, location. Uh, gender, age, and uh, which kind of uh, emergency are you responding in. For example, you are suffering from uh, a head injury, you are suffering from asthmatic attack, you are suffering from uh, allergic reaction, yeah. cardiac emergencies are there. So when we move, first of all, we must know is this a case of uh, basic life support, or is a case of advanced cardiac life support. Number two, we choose the right crew, this crew, are they basic life support providers? Are they advanced cardiac support providers? Right. Number three, the ambulance that, that we send. Categorically, basic life support and advanced life support. With the location, our advanced ambulance operators are trained, experienced, uh, and uh, they are conversant with Nairobi and its environments. All right. So with the location pinned, if it's Kilimani, if it's Kileleshua, if it's Gong Road, if it's Muthaiga, uh, name all those places in Nairobi. All right. They know that uh, if you follow this route, follow this, this one will lead us to the destination within 15 minutes turn right. around time. All right. Yes. And on that note, uh, I remember, why exactly is it important uh, for even to have a know-how on first aid? Because I believe first aid is not necessarily that you go to a doctor. Even yes. a person back at home can yes. be trained to, you know, how to perform yes. a first aid. What are some of the basics that, you know, yes. should be even be followed there? So let's start from why is it important to know about first aid? It is important to know about first aid because this is the uh, first uh, medical action one can take before an ambulance gets into the scene right. and our medical dispatcher who is a, who received that call will give you guidelines on what to do and uh, not what to do for example right. uh, a case comes in you have collapsed our medical dispatcher who received that call will give you more guidelines on how you can assist the patient or the one the victim before the ambulance comes. If it is bleeding, I tell you, uh, if you're having a first aid kit, you have, you have a glove, gloves, you must put on gloves, you must have uh, crepe bandages, you must know how to apply them. He or she will explain to you simultaneously, and he, will, he or she will reassure you before the ambulance comes. All right. It's very critical for one to, to know first aid before even calling an ambulance, because it can assist. All right. You get to some point, if there's no first aid, Yes, we reached the scene, but uh, uh, this patient has maybe uh, reached a level whereby there is no much this team can do. All right. But with first aid, at least it can assist the, All right. the victim. Fantastic. Yes. Now, let's get to that first aid kit. Of course, it's usually a red box. And yes. uh, uh, even according to uh, some of the health regulations, it, it is required even for public facilities to have at least a first aid kit. Yes. And um, a lot of people just say it is a box. But uh, it's a very serious box and it's yes. needed. Uh, yes. If you were to actually break it down for us and tell us what are some of the items that okay. should be in there mm. that can really be of help whenever there's an emergency situation. Yes. We're having there uh, some trauma shears. Uh, we're having gloves, crepe bandages, surgical spirits. We're having um, some paracetamol, some painkillers in that box. And um, sterile gauzes, 
mm, uh, anti-acids. Right. Yes, I believe that some of the major items that can, can be in that uh, first aid kit. Right. Yeah, because it is much basically for one who is a layman just to know wha what is before we now get into an advanced level of us as paramedics. All right. Mm -hmm. Now let me get back to your organization that you work with. Uh, in terms of even uh, bringing solutions to the table or uh, bridging in the gap in terms of even matters health, emergency and even evacuation, what are some of the achievements that you guys have managed to bring on the table? And uh, I love the fact that you mentioned you're working also with the national government, including Nairobi as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, number one, we've managed to have a, a team which is a training first aid and a ambulance operator, yeah. ambulance operators. Number two, we managed to have a, a foundation, Alpha Ambulance Service Group Foundation, whereby this one we are aiming to at least assist the variable in the community. All right. uh, for example, we are aiming with the pregnant mothers All right. back in the uh, uh, slums or areas which are devastated. All right. Number two, those victims who are, who are involved in road traffic accidents. Many of All them right. don't have insurance covers. It's All an right. accident, yes. Right. I'm sure I don't have cash. Right. One cannot be able. You know, healthcare is very expensive. Yeah. So the truth. So we are aiming on now we can assist these pregnant mothers to be uh, evacuated from home or of the scenes to the nearest facility. And number two, these victims who are involved in road traffic accidents to be evacuated or to be stabilized on scene and to be taken to the nearest facility. That's healthy, huh? Uh, number three, we'll manage at least to uh, achieve uh, and serve the community in urban its environments by getting uh, clients, working with various clients, big clients, insurance companies, hospitals, and uh, individuals. All right. Number three, we'll manage, well, number four, at least, we we'll manage to salvage some employment opportunities right. for young uh, paramedics, ambulance operators, and emergency medical technicians. Right. Yes, at least after working, uh, there's something they're getting. Right. How I many? How many number that you guys have money to employ? We're having 19 staff as per now. Okay. 19. And um, number four, our team has managed at least to get experience and mentor. Right. As a, for myself, as a journey, one cannot just be employed into an ambulance, just proceed. You're from right. school, proceed. proceed Giving yeah. this, this, this vehicle, yeah, yeah, proceed. Yeah. One you need, need to be mentored. Uh -huh. One need to be trained. Right. One need to be given skills and experiences. All right. Yes, so, uh, we allow internships. All right. We allow attachments into our system, into our uh, school. At least uh, one comes in from school from as a, as a paramedic, does his or her internship, sees what things are being done, sees how response is being done, and uh, you or she can now be get employed into Alpha Ambulance Service or another company. All right. Yes. Before, before we get to uh, how the COVID-19 pandemic uh, actually shaped that space as well, um, I, I'd really like to know if, if somebody wanted to maybe come and work with you, uh, yes. what are some of the things that you consider them to actually, you know, be allowed mm. to, you know, come into your organization. And as much as I, I, I have no idea if it requires you to have like maybe a degree or okay. uh, an experience or a background in medicine okay. or, 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 or medical care yes. or health care as well. For emergency medical technicians, it cuts across. One must have a valid emergency medical technician's practitioner license. Uh -huh. One must have at least an experience of two and a half years uh -huh. as an emergency medical technician. Uh -huh. As a paramedic, one year of experience right. in the field. Now, as an ambulance operator, these are people who are in the steering. You must yeah. know how to maneuver. You must know how to corner. Right. You must know how to get into the wrong side if things get well. But you must know how your patient is doing at the back. Right. For you to get a chance to operate, you must have an experience of four years. Four years experience. As, an, as a driver alone. Oh, as a driver now. As a driver alone. Oh. And you must have done some several courses. They want to invest so much into it. Because right. driving an ambulance, that's not just driving any car. Right. This is a vehicle which is saving life. Right. This is a vehicle which moves. Uh, right. In terms, they say, magic box. Right. Because it can, it can stay for eight hours without doing a call. But when it gets into the road, 
right? Sirens are there, headlights, everything is on. Now, you must have done number one, emergency vehicle operation course. Number two, ambulance operator course. Number three, defensive driving and refresher course. What does that mean? Defense driving. driving and <laughs> yeah, it, it means that uh, you you are trained. Uh -huh. uh, you know what you are doing on the road. You are observing safety. Safety right. is a priority. No right. matter how man, how speedy you are, right. you are saving a life too. So you right. must watch over you as a person. Right. You must watch over your colleague who is, who is the medic. You must watch over the patient. Safety. And number four, it is the safety of the public. All right. Because if you go on knocking everyone that are on the road, you are worsening the situation. All right. Yes. So, and number four, you must done basic life support and uh, advanced cardiac support because you're not just a driver. Right. You are also a medic in you're, that. You're like a doctor on, the, like a doctor on, the, on the crew. Yeah. Yes. And basically, we do have two nurses or two paramedics on board and one ambulance operator. Right. Yes. Interesting. Because, you know, a lot of people just see an ambulance moving on the road and yes. they assume, oh, these are just guys they're going to serve or maybe somebody is dying. But maybe sometimes you don't even know what yes. exactly is happening behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And before we get to the question about COVID, uh, what are some of the situations that you have managed to respond to that are actually life-changing, that have been life-changing to not only you as an individual as well as a paramedic, but even as a health advocate as well, and even to your organization. Some of the situations you've managed to go and rescue people, save lives, mm -hmm. and you know, you've know you managed to actually calm it down and things went well. Yes, many cases. Uh -huh. Many cases, I'll give you an example of two. Okay. Where we responded to a uh, road traffic accident at Thika Road, where uh -huh. we managed to evacuate a patient underneath underneath the vehicle. Hmm. So we had to use our mechanical skills that we, we turned into mechanics to use the jack. The vehicle was lifted. We put it on a spine board. You have many tools in the ambulance, many equipment of evacuation. All right. Stopping the patient. We managed even to use an advanced airway uh, equipment. All right. And the patient survived to... And to, uh, the to patient survive. survived. They did survived. not die. Thank survived. God. Yeah. So uh -huh. Number two, that was to, horrible. Yeah, we managed to rescue uh, one of the street, uh, street, street children. Uh -huh. St street kid was involved in a road traffic accident whereby uh, a lorry stepped on, on his abdomen by... It was an accident. And uh, there, I, 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 I'm saying I saved a life that day because I maneuvered through a heavy traffic to Aga Khan. Right. It was around the museum. Most of these uh, patients who, who are unknown or uh, patients who doesn't have an insurance cover, at least we do take them to uh, the nearest facility, which is a public facility, which is either Kenyatta, Bagadi, or Malusi. But if these patients have, because we normally take information, how old are you, do you have insurance cover, are you covered, which facility would you like to be taken to? So with the nearest facility as per that, I had to make that decision, is to dash into Aga Khan, right. there we also saved a life. Right. Yes. Number three is about a building which, which collapsed at uh, Tarsia. Uh -huh. The rescue team managed to give us a, 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 a kid, a pediatric, who was uh, two years old. A pediatric? Captured, uh, captured yeah. in the debris. We right. managed to intervene medically. I cannot speak because of... Uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, because of... Confidential. Uh, uh, confidential, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we dashed the kid into medical facility. Right. There, we saved a life. Yes, right. in many cases, but uh, by grace, it is by grace. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I'll also get back to the mental aspect of it all as you work in that space. Now, when the pandemic came, COVID-19 pandemic, is actually, uh, I'll say it was a global uh, life-changing uh, pandemic or disaster that yes. actually put a lot of, uh, say, uh, first responders, you, you can call them uh, f first responders, right, or, yes, or, yes. Or, or health workers on the spot. How did it shape you as an individual and as a company in terms of your profession, mm -hmm. working as a medical responder or as a paramedic? Mm. Yeah, actually with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, it, at the first time it was really challenging. Uh, we were scared since we were the frontliners. Actually, the, the, the paramedics right. and the 
emergency medical technicians. They were the ones rescuing people from home into facilities. facilities uh, transferring them from facilities to facilities. Right. Transferring them from home based care into other spaces, even evacuation from airports into other places. Right. So it really broke, uh, brought in many changes in the system that uh, we should be prepared. Right. This was a, a time whereby this was a, we, we need a system to, to change. Right. That uh, as emergency uh, practitioners, right. are we prepared? Right. Um, and also education. Right. That uh, are we educated now to handle such big cases? Mm -hmm. In case uh, another, pandem another pandemic comes in, right. of which the government came in strongly, we mm -hmm. were educated, we were given uh, kits mm -hmm. for, for the same. And mm -hmm. uh, this was talking about, I, I believe the EMS system, emergency medical system, was right. really appreciated. It really shaped us. Right. Of where there was empathy, there was sympathy about, right. uh -huh. uh, about everything, because you're carrying a patient. And, right. and you as a, yourself, you must also be protected the issue of contamination, the issue of, of lockdown. Imagine you're being in the, in the city alone, transferring right. yeah. So uh -huh. it will uh, brought a shape whereby uh, EMS system will be appreciated so much. Right. And uh, many uh, were also, it was a situation whereby it led to many of the medics also to be strong in the system. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we once talked about therapy in another segment of our shows, and uh, we were actually arguing, do therapists seek other therapists? Do they go to other therapists to offload, you know, some of the things that they've been told? And uh, the, the argument was, yes, yeah, sometimes, and sometimes, no. Now, uh, I'd also like to know, like, from your experience, you're working with a lot of traumatizing situations. Yes. Sometimes, uh, most of the situations are so intense and sometimes a little bit disgusting even to just the normal eye. Even for a person who doesn't have that kind of a training, yes. it's even traumatizing <laughs> to themselves if they just need yes. such a scenario. Yes. How do you offload and manage to stay so uh, grounded mentally okay. into that profession as a paramedic? As a paramedic. Right. Number one is through counseling. Uh, many of our paramedics and the emergency medical technicians have managed to share and uh, outcome the experiences through sharing, through counseling, sorry. Whereby the fellow counselor comes in and uh, you interact. You share all your experiences, griefing the process. Number two is uh, uh, through um, uh, as, a, as a team, we're having those sessions whereby you come from an, an, an event or a, or a distress call where you as a team, of which of where you mentioned that a counselor goes for a counselor. Right. Uh -huh. A paramedic talks, talks for a paramedic. To other paramedics, a paramedic, right. yeah. Uh -huh. And there, when you vent out, actually it goes out. It, it, it gets out. Right. Uh, to avoid uh, something as a post-traumatic stress disorder. disorder. Uh -huh. I want to show, show it in PTSD. your... Uh, yeah, yeah, PTSD. I want to show it, I want to show it you analyzing it. Right. It is real. It is happening. Many uh, medical personnel are passing through it. Right. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, once you share, once you went out, you'll be given time to go out uh, off, off days, leave days, and having those funeral counselors. I, I, I believe it's a thing which one uh, overcomes. Right. But personally, personally, it also came in, it also came in uh, as a passion. Right. From family background. My mother is a nurse. Oh wow, amazing. Uh -huh. Yes, so from that I had passion of getting into the medical uh, field. Mm -hmm. But now with my grades, I could not get into being a nurse or a doctor. A doctor, huh? Also so had passion for, for the paramedic. Yeah, I also had passion for speed. All right. Now. That is driving that, now. That's driving now. I had uh -huh. to combine the two of them to right. get into one. Right. So as a, as a career, I started training as an ambulance operator. Right. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm saying it is, it is also with... Um, uh, Career-wise, and uh, passion. Right. Yes, head passion. Right. Number one. Number passion. two. Mm -hmm. I had to, to come in and me, and bond with my career. Right. Yes. Kajita Mkutan. Yes. <laughs> so I started training as an ambulance operator. Right. The yeah. ambulance operator, I drove ambulances. I done several courses. Those I've mentioned, Evo, what and what. Right. Now, being a medic, and I went to do an emergency medical technician course. Right. So I combine them with passion, with uh, uh, skills, with education. 
I believe I'm unable to, to overcome. All right. And the best care I've read to my patient, uh -huh. I, 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 uh, and grace, grace right. of the Lord is uh, with me. Right. I haven't managed to have any PTSD. And right. I thank God for that. Amen. Yes. And glad you're here as well. Yes. Now, uh, at your company still, do you have like, a, uh, let's say, classes of responders? Like, in this category, we have people that respond to fires, or in this category, we have people that respond to accidents, which you mentioned. Do you have yes. like categories of responders with different trainings that, you know, yes. respond to various, you know, yes, we do. scenes? Yes, we do. And number one, I mentioned we're having a training school of first aid. Uh -huh. Number two, training school of uh, ambulance operator course. All right. In terms of fire, we are limited as paramedics and EMTs. We are given, we respond, but there's a space you have been given. Stay here. Right. Wait so for the you wait for the evacuation team to bring right. on those patients where you are. All right. Yes, like, I'll expand on that. Now, we, we as Alpha Ambulance Service, we are basically um, majorly involved in medical emergencies and trauma. Medical by emergencies and, and, and trauma. trauma. Right. Yes. Whereby these medical emergencies and trauma they are given to categories. Basic life support. These, these are basic cases. Basic life, basic and number two, advanced cardiac life support. Uh -huh. This is why we are going now into advanced stage of uh -huh. care. So uh -huh. we have teams which are trained basically for these basic life support emergencies. emergencies uh -huh. And you're having a team which is trained for advanced cardiac life support emergencies. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the, the cardiac is the extreme. The cardiac now is now the advanced one. All right. And the basic one is now the lower stage of uh -huh. advanced cardiac support. As I told you, as a dispatcher, when a dispatch call comes in, we shall send an ambulance that covers that case. That ambulance is meant for that basic case. That ambulance has a team which is trained basically for that case. But as the scope of practice advances, you will find that many of our paramedics in our company and EMTs in our company that are trained at advanced level. Uh -huh. Whereby we don't have these mixtures, these scrum these scrubbers back and forth. If it's a basic case, we are sending an advanced case. If it's an advanced case, we are sending an advanced case. Whereby it cuts across the board. Right. Yes. How do you how, how do you actually determine that? Because you know, I believe you have a toll number. Do you have like a toll number for your yes, organization? We do. Yes uh -huh. we do. It's usually free? No, it's or actually uh, now okay. because we're working on that. Uh -huh. It's been uh, two years now we're working on that to be a toll-free number. But if you call, there's someone who will pick that call right. and ask That's you where you are. Care yeah. service no, this, this is a medical dispatcher. Medical dispatcher. Medical dispatcher. Okay. He or she can determine if you, from the symptoms you are presenting, you right. can, de can determine if this is a basic case or this is an advanced cardiac life case. For right. example, if a call comes in, Hey, my name is Alpha. I'm, 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 many of them are callers. I've just seen somebody here has just been heated with a vehicle and this person is bleeding brutally. This person, okay, from where? Maybe from the lower extremities. You see, this is a basic life support case. But you never know because the bystander, the one giving information, he or she doesn't have knowledge. All right. Yeah, that's what you're saying. You're sending an uh, ambulance, which is adva advanced. Uh -huh. But if you see, if, if a call comes in, hi, I'm having a chest pain, a right. stumbling chest pain, and people say I'm having uh, issues with my sugars, issues with my blood pressure, definitely. This is an advanced cardiac case, chest right. pain, yes. Right. So you're able to determine that? We are uh, able to determine on, that on call, on, on, phone, call, call. on phone. Right. But the team that we send is an advanced, advanced team. team. Right. Yes. Which is interesting, because uh, I, I'm sure there's, uh, there's usually that also that challenge of language. Uh, yes. It's usually everywhere. You know, somebody can call, speak in another different language that you know the responder maybe doesn't understand. Do you also like maybe have interpreters who are on board to actually just you know try to interpret like somebody's calling? Yes. It's like you know the customer care somebody calling Safaricom but yes. speaking in a vernacular yeah, that the vernacular customer language. care service doesn't yes. understand. Um, yeah. We we did have an internship of the same uh, analysis. And, and thank you that you brought in. It, it, it came in where we received a call from South Sudan. Yeah, whereby there's a patient who wants to be evacuated from the nearest uh, a booking, the nearest airport to a facility here in, in, in Kenya. So it, it just emerged that time whereby we had someone who was doing that 
uh, internship in our company. Right. So she really assisted us with that. That thing is there, challenge is there, but at least we're having someone who does that uh, interpretation of the same. But in, in, in this guards, your message will be received. Right. Someone who will be sending that, that message confidentially in our system and he or she will get back to you. Right. Yes. As we near towards uh, the, the end of this, this discussion, I'd just like to know, uh, what are some of the most common cases mm -hmm. that uh, you guys solve? Uh, you mentioned a lot of accidents. I don't know if it's that, is that like the most common scenario that you guys, you know, are prone to all the time, that you get to, you know, help? No. Uh, uh, emergency is an emergency. Uh -huh. uh, Someone can still have both trauma and uh, medical. Right. But um, our team is majorly, in, uh, I can say, I can give 80% on medical cases and traumatic cases 20%. But now you see with a trauma case, it means that uh, there's blood, there, there, there's blood leaking out. Right. That, 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 that's trauma. That means that an external force right. has been applied against your, your body. And most of these trauma cases are the most which are so much vigorous entails and scene stabilization, we must pack, you must give some medications, you must intervene well. And so the most of the cases that are, are really are uh, traumatizing to most of our medical pioneers. But in medical cases, it's about uh, history taking, correct intervention, taking of vital signs, reporting to a dispatcher, dispatcher goes in another facility where we are taking the patient and all is well. Right. So you'll find medical cases, medical cases most of them occur in our, in our houses, trauma cases most of them occur outside in the public. Right. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, I understand your company was uh, uh, formally solidified in 2020, yes, right? Yes, yes. And uh, you're also working with the county government. Are you working yes, with the county Nairobi? working with the Nairobi Metropolitan Services. Right. Yes, yes. I also one of our ambassadors are based in Kisi. Right. Yes, yes, yes. So are there some of the, of the gaps that you guys are coming in to fill in terms of even improving uh, medical response in Nairobi specifically that you'd say um, mm -hmm. in as much as this new, new uh, regime is coming in mm -hmm. this is what we are actually presenting on the table and is among our visions as well as a company yes uh, as I mentioned earlier we're having this foundation uh -huh. where we, are, we are aiming also to work with the county government because they receive much of this this has caused also from uh, those uh, uh, areas that I've mentioned around um, the slum areas uh, whereby we need of uh, evacuating pregnant mothers to their facility, number one. Number two, also working in, with the police here in Nairobi, whereby how, how can they assist us right. in case they see a road traffic accident, how they can call us, how could they even, even offer first aid. Number three is that um, with this county government also aiming, we are having a system whereby if a call comes in, we need to have a turnaround of 15 minutes. Now, we're having a dashboard which we shall share with them. And uh, within this da dashboard, we have incorporated other ambulances. For example, if a uh, disease call comes in uh, from uh, uh, this highway, highway of ours, maybe Haile Salasi. Right. Yes. Which is the nearest ambulance which can right. be sent? Uh -huh. to rescue that which apart from alpha ambulance but right. this ambulance is incorporated in our system uh -huh. yes with that system of theirs when you say that this this is called there's need of an ambulance coming all the way from bagadi way or uh, from langata right this ambulance which is nearest Haile Selassie right. is the one which should be sent to right. pick this patient but in coordination with the county government all right yes interesting and uh, as we come to a close, maybe are there uh, any projects that you guys are working on to ensure that you know you guys are going to stay afloat as we exit in terms of even uh, improving medical health response to ensure that you know your organization stays afloat. And as much as you you you've, you mentioned that you're also working in the government as we exit. Uh, I pardon. Are there any future? Uh, yes. projects or maybe future aspirations for you. Let me just call them SDGs okay. that you guys are working on to ensure that you improve uh, first medical response. Uh, we, we improve on first medical yes. uh, response in, right. in this system. Yeah. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, I, I think that's the, the turnaround time. Right. Actually, we're looking at on how turnaround time of an ambulance should uh, reach a scene. 
Right. Uh, this arrival should be uh, about 15 minutes at most. Right. So um, if the government can uh, uh, give space for the EMS, that uh, EMS are being given priority, maybe if there's a, a stretch for them, right. if a police officer gets, a, he has, he, he gets to hear siren, right. are these ambulances being given priority? Are right. these fire brigades being given priority to wreck that patient? And um, we're also looking on now, we, we are also partnering with the various manufacturers in the field of emergency and the field of medical, for example, Philips, for example, Drega, on how they could uh, give uh, some AEDs, uh, autom automated external defibrillators. How can they be given uh, these first aid kits? Because anything can happen. Right. And people need to be trained on how to use these AEDs. Mm, yeah. uh, people back need to be home, trained right. back at home, even right. in, in malls, right. even uh, in uh, various institutions. Events mass, as well. Yeah, events yeah. as well. Because we're having various attacks right. in this health care system. Whereby right. if somebody is being trained how to use an AD, one right. can touch an AD as he, the ambulance is in route. One needs to be trained on how to use a first aid kit as the ambulance comes in route. I believe also um, number one is training, ed number two is ed education, three is response time. How right. much time can an because you can find an ambulance is stuck on traffic. Yes. How much? Those people have that it's usually mm. a big barrier, right? Uh, yes, yeah, if, if an emergency is in Jogoro, or Thika Road, you want to respond to somebody <laughs> in Roisambo, yes. and you're stuck in, yes. uh, uh, let's say, Bagadi. Uh, Bagadi, and, right. and, and, uh, and even at uh, that's what I'm, I'm telling you, our our company, if you want to join us as an ambulance operator, okay, you must have a four-year experience in a, in Nairobi and its environment. Right. You must know when I, must. Use, when I use when I use when I use Bagadi way. Right. At this time, is it open? Is it moving? Uh -huh. If, in fact, you must have three options. Right. When I'm, 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 I'm going to take a road, I'm at Bagadi Way. How many options am I having? If Bagadi Way is closed, how many options am I having? I'm going to Lavington, I'm on Tika Road. If Tika Road is closed, which options am I having? I should not pass through town. I, for example, I'm going to Lavington and I'm on Tika Road. I'm not supposed to go to town. I was supposed to use Museum Hill, I go to Riverside, stretch, um, into, uh, so the, the things which I'm, 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 I'm trying to say, Just you, that you, you must know how to city. maneuver, you must have Nairobi on your finger, on your navigation, page, on your navigation. All right. and uh -huh. I'm not being driven with any, in, in, any driver, because right. number one, you must reduce response time, number two, you must also watch safety, safety right. is a priority, number three, you must know what kind of a patient are you carrying? Because if you're carrying a patient who's having a, a trauma to the back right. and you are bumping the bumps, you are cornering uh, sharp, you eventually lose that patient. So right. no matter how fast you are, you can be fast and smooth, soft. Fast and smooth. And you can be fast and rough. Rough, yeah. Yes. Which is not required. Which is not required as, right. as, 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 a, as an ambulance operator. I, right. I've, I've re I didn't want to stress on that as an ambulance operator. operator. Basically. Yes, yeah. Yeah, basically. And our, our numbers are... are um, they are placed, though. They are placed. Yeah. It's 0711 475 475. Uh -huh. And it's 0715 000333. And I'm also part of the team right. that responds. Uh, I am an emergency, advanced emergency medical technician. You're an advanced one. Yes. Yeah. At the same time, I'm also an advanced ambulance operator. So I'm also... I can steer the ambulance. Right. I can maneuver through traffic. Right. And at the same time, I can also be with the patient right. behind while another driver is okay. driving Absolutely. the ambulance. Yes, they're, they're, they're called operators. Operators. Uh, yes. Where, where, is the of, where are the offices located? Those are located in, in, in Utawala. Okay. But our ambulances are based in CBD. All right. One along Electricity House. Okay. Another one is along Valley Road. Right. But they do interchange as the right. times goes by. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Right, uh, that's our time right there with uh, Michael Ambrosi Luchombo, who's an emergency medical technician uh, working with uh, emergency response teams right there to ensure that, you know, uh, health uh, facilities or uh, responding to emergency situations yes. when it comes to even ensuring that, you know, you are at an event, you're at a mall, you're at a public space, you are safe, or just in case something happens to you, yes. he is the guy to go to right yes. there. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so for this time. It's my pleasure. Right. And the public 
has it all. Anytime you call Alpha Ambulance Service, we shall respond as professionals. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we're taking a short break. Uh, when we come back, we'll be having uh, Mr. World Kenya. We'll be talking about matters, um, the pageantry and the community service. How can we also, I, I love the fact that it's also relating to service and, you know, uh, 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 Ambro, uh, Ambrosi here is, uh, has been actually telling us, you know, how to ensure that, you know, you stay safe. So we'll be having that discussion shortly on the hashtag or in the morning on everyone, all our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter as well. We take a break. We are back with much more. Don't touch the dial.